Hi everybody, so we are just outside the famous Salineras de Maras. So why the heck should you come to the Moray Ruins, or at least consider booking a trip to Peru to see sites like this? Welcome to the Sacred Valley Adventures, where my wife Vanessa and I travel throughout the magical country of Peru, deep into the Andes Mountains, to discover the real beauty of Peru. Vamanos! Bienvenidos everybody! One hour plus long collectivo later, 30 minutes of haggling for a taxi, plus a 35 minute bumpy taxi ride later, we are here at the entrance to Moray, which is part of the Bolístico, Turístico General, what do we want to say, the general tourist ticket, which we got um, like almost a week ago, which covers 16 different sites and is good for 10 days. So Moray was definitely on our list. A little bit difficult to get to, as I said, but the way to do it is take a colectivo to, from Cusco to Uramamba, which is about seven soles, and then we took a taxi from Uramamba to Marai for about 30 soles. We have a fun day planned. We're gonna check out Marai and then go to another destination really close by to make a two for one deal. Anyways, let's check out the beautiful Zona Arqueológica de Marai. So why the heck should you come to the Moray Ruins, or at least consider booking a trip to Peru to see sites like this? So first of all, it's very cool to look at, it's very pretty, it's very aesthetic, so if you just like looking at nice things, like someone potentially behind the camera, you'll enjoy the Moray Ruins just for that. But there is actually some really cool meaning that if you dig a little bit, you can start to learn about. Because archaeologists, archaeologists, my bad, first thought that the Moray Ruins were an amphitheater of sorts, where sort of cascading, falling rows. Those were originally like the audience bleachers where they would sit and watch the performance and down in the middle at the lowest point maybe that's where the performers were. Kind of makes sense. You can kind of compare it to a concert venue in that sort of way but it was for a little bit more of an important meaning than just entertainment. These terraces here are originally gardens that were used by the Incans to test different crops growing at different microclimates because for each different layer and level of the Murray Terrace it's about a two degree temperature difference. So you can really start to see small differences in different crops and how they would grow and perform maybe throughout the year. So this was not only where they grew crops, but they did some bit of testing and research to find out the best weather conditions for each crop that would grow in the Andes Mountains here in Peru. At least that is the working theory by people that know a lot more than me. So cool to think about that they had such a sophisticated way to try and, you know, maintain their civilization and just have a good idea of weather and crops, which is a very important thing even now today. Also, it looks like there's about 14 different levels of terraces. So it's 14 different microclimates they could test for growing. It's really interesting. I could be off by one, so uh, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, please. I love to get proven wrong. No, I'm kidding, I will block you if you prove me wrong. I'm also kidding, I won't do that. As you can see, definitely a little bit busy for tourists. It's Sunday too, so it's a weekend, but not that bad, still plenty of room to enjoy. And little did I know, there's a little mini Moray um, archaeological area right here, where it's also circular shaped. I think as much love as the bigger brother, but hey, I'm still giving it its due diligence by looking at it for four seconds and moving on. Another fascinating thing about visiting Moray is you have the jaw dropping Andes Mountain Range right on this other side here. And not only do you have some really um, beautiful green lush mountains, you have some snow capped alpine zone mountains that are just so extreme and intense growing behind. So dramatic. And we're gonna do a little hike from Moray, or Moray, however you say it, to Town of Maras, to ultimately the destination that I'm most excited about seeing today, which you probably know in the title is the Salineras, Salineras de Maras. We're gonna start hiking there and show you the views along the way. It's gonna be a long day of adventure, but it's what we signed up for, right? All right, so from here, we took the road from Mare, and then where the road normally, sorry, I hope I'm making you guys too dizzy, goes that way, there's an alternative hiking trail right here, the Via Alterna Maras. So we're gonna take that with these scenic ass views, and it should be a little while to get to the Pueblo, but we came here to hike and explore, so we're gonna do it. Vamanos. So although the trek from Moray to Maras is supposed to be a little long, I think it's estimated about an hour and a half, it's super easy. It's just a flat road. It's a nice leisurely stroll through the Andean countryside. And these mountains, guys, so some of the prettiest like alpine, rocky, uh, high altitude mountains I've ever seen. Up there with Colorado. Hawaii was a different taste, a little bit more tropical and green and lush, but these are so beautiful. And the farmland around, the crops growing, 
It's gorgeous as well. And we're going through these little farms and uh, small homes. And it's really cool to see the animals, lots of donkeys and horses and cows, pigs, but it makes you a little sad because I'm sure, we know what goes along with farming, but it's a little bit of a different story here, I'm sure, because people here, they probably do this as a living requirement because there's no job out here. It's just, you live on the land and make do with what you have. So I just hope they treat the animals as nice as possible. But besides that, don't want to get too down. It's gorgeous and a really fun to look. Hey look, Vanessa. I found your family. Another really cool thing I'm noticing while hiking this trail is a lot of the crops that are growing is corn. But it's not just any kind of corn, it is the corn used for chicha, which is like the fermented corn beer made from the purple corn, which you can tell the stalks here are tinted, sort of like a red maroon color here and there. And that's very important in Incan culture because this kind of corn, they use it to make lots of foods. Like I've even seen uh, cornbread made from the purple corn. They may have a dessert called mazamora marara, which is like a purple corn pudding. And then of course, chicha marara, which is like a common non-alcoholic, like sweet tasting purple corn drink in the original chicha, which was a ceremonial drink that the Incas used to have for various uh, celebrations or important events. So really cool to see that part of history and uh, Incan culture still thriving today. Sometimes you never grow out of that teen angst phase, do you? Hola, donkey. Hola, amigo. ¿Dónde va? ¿Son nosotros? Hi, everybody. Don't be a dick like that guy and kick your animals because they'll want to follow you and make new friends that are nicer, clearly. So we finally made it from Moré to Maras. I took a really big detour because I got lost, which ended up being like a big triangle instead of a straight line. So it took a lot more time than I thought. We're just passing through the town. It has a really charming feel. Lots of like old historic type of buildings. And a lot of shops are closed because it's a Sunday, quite unlikely. But we're gonna try and go from here to the Salineras de Maras. So we try and find the hiking trail that leads from the town to the mines. And then this whole little journey hike will be wrapped up. So we were in the heart of Maras, and this is the Plaza de Armas. This is actually our Plaza de Armas 3. We went to one in Lima, one in Cusco, and I guess every town or city in Peru has them. It's really gorgeous. I love the beautiful snow-capped mountains in the background. In the heart of the center, we have Moray, which of course we just went to, and then our little donkey friend that we had to leave behind. So really charming little plaza with nice little touches and trees and flowers, but can't stay here for long, guys. The journey must continue. So I just did a little detour to check out this really beautiful old church at the Templo de San Francisco de Assisi, I think it is. As I'm checking the little informational thing over there. But anyways, it's a Sunday. Maybe that's why it's closed. Can't get any further than this gate. But just cool to sneak a little peek of it in the mountains below. Anyways, that's it for Maras, I think, guys. So before we officially took the trail to the Maras salt mines, we went to Salt Maras, Peru, a massive store selling plenty of goods made from the Maras salt and other cool Peruvian goods as well. But the main thing they sell here is chocolate. In my oh my, they have loads and loads of different varieties. They're all really delicious. And you can even buy the actual salt from the salt mines as well. But we're gonna check this out in just a second, guys. Hola, amigas. So kind and polite. You're so cute. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we are just outside the famous Salineras de Maras. And they are the salt mines of Maras, in case you don't speak Espanol. 
I'm fluent, it's okay, I give lessons, I will be more than happy to teach you one. No, I'm kidding, I'm not fluent at all. Anyway, they are so gorgeous and there are so freaking many of them. This is only the first viewpoint. We're gonna try and get up closer and really get a good viewpoint of how big and how numerous they are. Let's go. So the interesting thing about the salt mines is each different mine, and again there's thousands, is owned by an individual family and it's been passed down for generations. It's kind of like the family business. What a beautiful so business it is. And they harvest the salt and it's sold in the town, it's exported overseas. It's similar to Himalayan pink salt that you've probably heard of, is that Indian pink salt. So really cool stuff guys. Just a little bit of history in case you're curious. So those were the Maras salt mines, everybody. Now we are continuing on this hiking trail, leading past this river called the Urumama River, and there should be collectivos coming by on the way to Cusco. So from the Mara salt mines, we actually walked to the little small village of Tarambamba, which is very quaint and authentic, even smaller than Maras, where we had to go over this really funny, kind of sketchy suspension bridge, and then cross the Urumamba River to eventually try and make it and look out for a Colectivo to take us home. All right, everybody, we are leaving Maras, trying to get a Colectivo back into town. It's very late. Hopefully all goes well. So everything definitely went well because our next adventure will take us to Oyente Tambo, another village in the Sacred Valley of Peru. Lots of beauty, lots of culture, lots of history and ruins as always. So be sure to check out the next Sacred Valley adventure. Thanks for watching everybody. Let's go. Let's go.